While we've covered almost all classical physics topics in AP Physics 2, how do we deal with objects when they get super small or move super fast? In this video, we'll run through a couple of the more modern physics topics covered in the AP Physics 2 curriculum. While each of these respective fields can get extremely complicated and actually are being researched more as we speak, the material covered in this class might seem weird at first, but is not too difficult to grasp. Let's first dive into a topic you may have learned about from your chemistry class, nuclear or atomic physics. As you probably have heard, atoms are structured with a central nucleus made of neutrons and protons, with electrons that orbit the nucleus at discrete energy levels, which will represent through the Bohr model, different rings where electrons orbit, representing different energy levels. The main topic we'll discuss in this area is when these electrons switch between different energy levels. When the energy is imparted or the atom is excited, the electrons can actually jump to higher energy levels from before, and can later fall down to lower levels over time. When these electrons drop energy levels, the released energy is emitted as light or photons, with a frequency given by this equation. The little letter h here represents Planck's constant, which has a value shown here. Another topic related to atomic and nuclear physics is radioactive decay, or the natural decay of certain unstable isotopes of certain elements. The time measurement used in these problems is known as the half-life, or the time it takes for some sample of some radioactive substance to decay by half. Using this information, the mathematical model that describes radioactive decay looks something like this, or an exponential decay based on the initial population as well as the half-life. A completely different topic that only requires a qualitative understanding for this course is special relativity. Essentially, when objects move at speeds that are near the speed of light, or c, space and time are warped. Namely, moving objects appear shorter through a phenomenon called length contraction, while moving objects experience time slower through a phenomenon known as time dilation. Another topic where our classical understanding of the world is warped is known as quantum physics. One of the most famous concepts of quantum physics is known as the de Broglie wavelength, which has an equation shown here. Essentially, any object with momentum actually has a wavelength associated with it, though it will be essentially zero unless the object is extremely tiny. Though this leads to phenomena such as the wave-particle duality of certain objects and diffraction patterns, you'll only need to know the formula itself for your test problems. The final topic covered in this modern physics unit is called the photoelectric effect. Attributed to Albert Einstein, the photoelectric effect essentially states that light shown on materials can actually emit electrons from it. The equation governing the kinetic energy of these electrons emitted is shown here, where this quantity here is known as the work function and is a property of the material itself. Essentially, once the energy of the photons or light exceeds this barrier called the work function, electrons are emitted with some kinetic energy, where the intensity of the photons or quantity of light actually has no effect whatsoever on the kinetic energy of electrons emitted. With that, you can feel good about learning a crash course in topics like atomic and nuclear physics, special relativity, quantum physics, and the photoelectric effect.